The stakes are high in Pennsylvania's capital this spring. Lawmakers are crafting a solution, we hope, to address the state's crumbling transportation infrastructure and inadequately funded transit systems. Transit in particular turns out to be a very high priority for younger workers whose numbers have been growing here in recent years. And it's critical in many communities. Without it, people simply can't get to work. The stakes are high enough that the Pittsburgh Community Reinvestment Group conducting its own transit-oriented development study. Chris Sandvig is Goberg and Regional Policy Director for the PCRG, and welcome. Good to have you here. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for having me. I described you as Goberg. First <laughs> off, what exactly is Goberg? Yeah. Goberg is an initiative of the Pittsburgh Community Reinvestment Group, which itself is a membership-based organization of 44 community development corporations and neighborhood-based groups within the city and first ring suburbs, focusing, focusing on the renewal of our urban environment and attraction of investment. We came to the discussion on transit from a couple of perspectives. One, recognizing that for our neighborhoods to really thrive in order to get the, the numbers of people into the neighborhoods that were there in the first place, we really needed a robust transit system that was able to deliver those people. And also that through transit-oriented development, we could provide new resources into these neighborhoods that create the communities that the young professionals that you were speaking of, as well as those that are relying on the transit system, have attractive options in their transportation choices that actually leads to, builds to the vibrance of the vibrancy of the region. We have three areas that we're focusing on. I mentioned the transit and development piece is one of those. The other is, of course, sustainable, reliable, and growing funding for transit within southwestern Pennsylvania. As you had said, this is something that the young professionals that are coming into our region and other regions really demand. Uh, they want options in their transportation choices. And the third is having a conversation at the regional level about what sort of community is we want to live in. What sort of transportation system is really a priority here? How is transit a part of that? And how is transit an economic engine that we really should invest in within Pittsburgh and the surrounding area? You know, it really came home at the Allegheny Conference in 2011 was doing its uh, triennial planning process and did a big event with emerging leaders, younger people in the community. What were their priorities? What were the biggest obstacles in the way of our region's success? Number one, was transit mm -hmm. and I think it came as a surprise to the business leadership involved in the process that young people really cared that deep it was on everybody's list mm -hmm. but for them it was number one so it doesn't seem to surprise you at all it's really not about econ um, ideology it's about the economy and it's about demographics <clears throat> excuse me those the, the 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 young professionals of today want to live in communities where um, they have choices in their transportation options. They still want to live in single-family detached homes, but they don't necessarily want to live in a type of environment where when they come home after being at work, they have to be get in the car to go to the store or to go to the coffee shop, go to the bar, or to take their children to soccer practice or things along those lines. They want to be able to walk in their communities. They want to be able to share experiences. And it's very fascinating because we're seeing at the national level um, uh, a huge shift in the millennials and, and below in terms of at this point in America less than half of people aged 16 to 20 have a driver's license. Now you and I Less than half, less than half. 16, my daughter's one of them, but right. less than half 16, right. now I right. feel bad. <laughs> Some would say that's, because, that, that's partly because of the economy, but it's also because of choice. We're seeing two things happen. There's a, there's a reduction in the desire of home ownership and there's a de reduction in the desire of car ownership. Hmm. And what that means when you add those together is compact, walkable communities where you have accessible transit, quality transit, um, and the amenities that allow you to live a life that way which, as you and I also both know, cars are an expensive thing to own, um, are very high on the priority list for uh, the youth of today. Really fascinating. I want to come back to this whole idea of transit-oriented development. It seems to me before you can have transit-oriented development, you have to have a vital, robust transit system with some potential to improve the level of service over time. Absolutely. Uh, you know, obviously that's the debate in Harrisburg right now. Mm -hmm. What is the state's role? What is the regional role? Uh, do you think the proposal that the governor put on the table is sufficient, or, or, or does there have to be more? The governor, I think, has put forward a good starting point to have this conversation. It's, it's, there's a recognition within the proposal that mass transit is important to the economy of Pennsylvania um, and how the urban centers really drive the economy of this state and the nation in general. Um, there are things that uh, need to occur at, in Harrisburg uh, to ensure that transit does remain robust. We, uh, in some ways, we're ahead of the rest of the country. Our ridership for the size of our region is actually 
much higher than other regions of our size, especially when compared to the other manufacturing belt cities. Um, so we've already we've been investing in transit. Uh, I think they understand the, the the need here. When you consider that over half of the people who work downtown, second largest job center in the state, and over 30 percent of the people who work in Oakland, third largest job center in the state, take transit to work. Um, there is definite recognition of the tax revenue and that's what that means for the Commonwealth. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next several months, but at this point we're encouraged that this is part of the conversation. Uh, helpful, I would think, for folks who care about this issue to weigh in uh, with their lawmakers mm -hmm. right now and, mm -hmm. and keep the heat on to make sure there's a good solution. Absolutely. I think it's very important that um, your legislators know that this is important to you, um, that transit touches everybody in this region, whether you uh, drive or ride. Uh, we introduced an impact report last year, what the 35% service reduction of the Port Authority might mean in terms of dollars and cents to Allegheny County taxpayers, whether you ride or drive. And when you add it up in total, it's well over $300 million in new transportation costs wow. to residents of this county. All right. A lot at stake. We'll see how it unfolds in Harrisburg. Chris Sandvin from PCRG, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. And we'll be back in a minute with a little more dollars and cents. Stay with us.